I've gotten a lot of requests on how to make title screens like this, 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 and this. Title screens like these are super useful in breaking up a video into segments, adding some visual interest, and emphasizing what is being said. There are a good few decisions you have to keep in mind when making these title animations. The main three you want to be thinking about are colors, typography, and texture. The colors you end up picking will play a huge role in the outcome of your product. They help set the tone. Lighter colors will often be more friendly and more down to earth, whereas darker colors will often convey a more serious tone. Your choice of fonts won't have as big of an impact on the outcome as the colors, but they do help you build the world. I personally love mixing fonts to create some interest and looks, but at the end of the day, the most important thing you have to remember is to keep it legible. If you need any font recommendations, I highly recommend checking out my best free fonts for designers video. Last but not least, we have textures. This is where you have the opportunity to take your design into a lot more different directions. There's quite a few things that go into deciding what kind of textures you want to apply, but I generally ask myself two questions, which is what emotion am I trying to evoke and what is the purpose of the texture? If I want something that's more grungy and serious i'll typically go for something that's a little bit faster paced more contrasty and carries a lot more weight so that again goes in hand with the colors if you pick some dark colors if i want to ground my animation more i'll usually go with something slower and more subtle to help it feel more natural and organic another part of choosing textures is context if i'm making a piece about paintings or i want to simulate that painterly style i of course want to pick a texture that is paint if I have something that's handwritten or I want to simulate the feeling of paper, I'll go with that. And again, you want to keep in mind the pacing of the textures, but we'll get more into that in the practical bit. In After Effects, I have a 1920 by 1080 composition set up, and this is just the basic. You, of course, want to match your composition to the size of the video you're working on, whether that be 4K or 21 by 9 aspect ratio, I can't remember, but just make it the size of the video that you're going to be working on. Now, the first step is laying out our title cards. I'm going to start by creating a solid. And in this case, I'm just going to leave it at black for now. That'll be the very basic step, just so we have a background. Next step is picking our fonts and laying out the text. Now, we want to keep in mind that we want this to be easily changed because we're most likely going to have to create multiples. I am planning on using a mix of two different fonts because that's just the look I really enjoy. The first thing I'm going to do is write my subtext. And in this case, we're just going to name it first decision. I'm going to make sure that I align this to the left. So it's left aligned. So if I go in and change the text, it'll start the left and then go right. I'm going to change this font to a sans serif font. In this case, I've already picked that I'm going to use the BM serif display and I am going to put it in italics and then I'm just going to scale it down a good bit and center it up. When it comes to the layout of the text itself, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. I generally like either aligning each of the title, subtitle and the main title on each side or above one another. Now I'm going to create another text. So I'm just going to select my text tool, click anywhere on the canvas and then type my main title, which is going to be colors. For this one, I'm going to use Poppins, which is just a very nice um, sense. This is a sans serif, sorry. And the other one is a serif, it's getting mixed up. I'm gonna scale it up a good bit because it is our main title. It's the most important thing. We're gonna make sure that's pretty big and that's just creating some good hierarchy. So we have the subtitle here, which is the first bit of it, which is a bit smaller. It's not as important. And then our main title. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna open my title action safe and I'm just gonna line up each side of it to this leftmost and then the rightmost and for this text I don't want it to be left aligned because I want to be able to change this later and not have to reposition it so I'm going to make sure that it's right aligned make sure that's lined up with this line right here as well I wanted to change this to texture you can see it's still aligned on that same side so it's just going to make it a little bit easier on ourselves now we want to start thinking about colors before we start animating anything in this case for this video which is I'm animating the title cards for this video so you've already seen this title card which is a little bit meta but anyways, we are, I want to go for a more grounded, earthy, natural look. So I'm going to hit shift command Y, which is going to bring up my solid settings. And then I can change the color of my background. I personally love blue. So I'm just going to pick a nice light blue desaturated color. I really like this color. Now we have our main colors. We have this white, which is a slight off white. It's just F3, F3, F3. I just, I like it a little bit more than white you can also go in and change the color of maybe your subtitle just to make it a little bit less distracting like a darker shade of the color that you're using for your background i like to keep it as simple as possible so i'm just going to keep it to the two colors for now especially because we have already created some hierarchy in the font choice so you can see this is way bolder than this one and then also the scale. My rule of thumb for the animation itself is to keep it pretty simple. You don't want your animation to be distracting from the viewer when you have these title calls because that defeats the whole purpose of them. I tend to only do 
position animations, it just works well, quick attention grabbing, and not too flashy. In certain instances where the font has allowed it, I've used a stroke reveal. You can do whatever you want, but keep it pretty simple. Make sure that it's legible for the people reading it. In this case, I'm just gonna select my two layers, hit P, go about one second forward, keyframe it, go back, and then just drag it down a little bit, and then go forward to, let's say about four seconds, keyframe it again, and then at five seconds, drag it up, select all our keyframes, and you can either use flow, which, you know, I'm a big proponent of sexy speed. Otherwise, you can hit F9, open up your speed graph, and you can manually change these to give it some nice easing. We don't like linear keyframes, so don't do that. Another thing I typically like to do with the animations is to offset it a little bit. I'll typically have the first word, so going from left to right, because that's the way we read. I'll have first decision come in first and then colors come in secondly. So it looks kind of like this. I'm gonna trim it just a little bit and I'm also gonna trim it at the end. It's just a little thing I like to do. So far we have a super simple animation, a very clean layout, good choice of fonts. And that's the base of creating good title cards. There's of course a little bit more we can do to this. That is where I have the most fun and that is in texturing and then the sauce at the end, but we'll hold off on that for just just a minute. There's a couple different ways you can animate textures and it really depends on what you have available. I'm going to show you the three ways that I'll typically animate a texture so that you have all the tools necessary in your toolbox. I'm going to start out by creating a new composition by hitting command N. I'm just going to keep it at 1920 by 1080, same exact settings, but instead of having it a 10 second, I'm just going to make it a one second composition. This first technique is especially useful if you have multiple different sources. So like this case, I have a newspaper looking texture. I'm going to take them all in and I'm going to rotate them about 90 degrees and then scale them down a bunch. I'm just going to solo one for now and start by positioning it. Again, this technique is mainly if you have a sequence of textures that are all the same, but slightly different. Like this case, they're all the same texture essentially but they just have slight variances in them. Now that all our textures are in place, I'll go forward to six frames because we have four, we have 24 frames. So that's, that's just how math works. So at my playhead at six frames, I'm gonna hit shift command D, which is gonna split all the layers at the playhead, hit delete command A to select all my layers, right click on one of the layers, go to keyframe assistant and sequence layers. And that's just gonna place our layers one by one. So if we play it back, we have this looping texture with four different images. This is the only one where it's helpful to pre-comp it because we're gonna have to add time remapping to loop it. The other ones you can just make in your composition. So if I take my first paint texture, and just put it at the very top and solo it. I'm gonna hit P, Shift R and Shift S to bring on my position, scale and rotation. At the very beginning of my composition, I'm gonna keyframe all of them, go forward 12 frames, rotate it, scale it up and you can move it around a little bit. Go forward to one second, rotate it more, move it, scale it, position it. Just make sure it's different each time. And then last but not least at one second and 12 frames, rotate it even more, position it however you want, maybe scale it up a little bit, right click him, toggle hold for keyframe. If I alt click the stopwatch and do a loop out expression, I will right click on the position parameter. I'll do copy expression only, and then just command V on the other two. Now if I hit U twice, it's gonna bring up my keyframes and you can see we have these hold keyframes and we have looped them. So it's just gonna keep looping forever and ever and ever. So I'll usually just drag it so that the first couple keyframes don't show. The last technique is more useful in situations where you have a texture kind of like this one that look very different top to bottom, but just have a really cool feel to them. You wanna start out by positioning and scaling them kind of wherever you want. And you can either add a transform effect or do it directly in the parameter settings in here. So I'm just gonna hit P to bring on my position or click the position and we're gonna add a posterize you don't need to add a posterize, but it looks better in my opinion. I'm just gonna do a six just to slow it down a little bit and then add a wiggle and we're gonna do 222,3. And as you can see, it's just gonna give us a little bit of movement in that texture. Nothing fancy, the texture really does all the work for us. We just want to give it a little bit more life than what it already has. There's two ways you can go about adding texture as a background. Sometimes like with the texture overlay here, this gray one, which is roughly 50% gray. You can go in and you can select the overlay blend mode and you can see you get a pretty good result off the bat. You have more complicated textures 
like the one here that I want to use, which is a lot of different colors. So finding a blending mode that works might be a bit more difficult. You can see you have luminosity, which works very well, creates a super interesting look. To switch through your blend modes, you just want to hold shift and then minus or plus to cycle through. If I set it back to normal, you can also go in, let's add a hue saturation to it, decrease the saturation, and then you can add maybe a levels effect to it and then adjust the contrast in there. And that'll end up giving you a little bit of a different look. You can see we no longer get any of the colors that were in there, but we can get some really cool looks like this contrasty look. You can even just leave it as is. You don't have to do anything to it if you don't want to. I think this looks fine as is. I do however want to add the other texture we animated as a foreground texture. I'm gonna drag that in. Now we have this in here, which is not gonna do us much good because it's only one second long and we don't want to duplicate, drag it. It's just too tedious. So right click on the pre-comp and go to time, enable time remapping, go to the last keyframe. You can zoom in to make it a little bit easier on you. Go one keyframe back by holding command and then arrow button, place a keyframe right there. You can delete the last keyframe, alt click the stopwatch and add a loop out. Now with this texture, it's just gonna keep looping it at one second, then another second, then another second. But what if you wanna change the pacing of it, which is also a huge aspect in creating a look. Most people won't change the pacing of it. And sometimes you'll see some paper crumble effects that are just way too fast. It's distracting. You don't want that you wanna be able to pace your textures accordingly. One way of doing it with the time remapping is simply moving your last keyframe. This keyframe is essentially the endpoint. So if I drag it to be double the length, it'll be half as far. So it's basically at 50%. You can also add a pressurized time to the pre-comp itself. Let's drop it down to three, for example, and then that'll also be slower. I tend to go with just adjusting my last keyframe. Now we need to change the blend mode. And again, you can cycle through the blend modes and get to a look that you think is really cool. In this case, I'm gonna go with linear burn just because I think it looks pretty sick. And instead of being completely black, you can see it, it feels a little bit more darkish bluish than just black. We're already getting close to the end. We've got a good little look going on, but there's lacking some sauce. It still feels pretty eh. As per usual, we're gonna have to add some sauce. One way I like doing that is adjustment layers, posterize time, that's the first one. Drop that down to 12. I want to keep this pretty grounded. I wanna keep it pretty light. So by slowing it down, it's gonna feel more natural rather than keeping it at the pace that it is and feeling a little bit too speedy. Another adjustment layer, again, you create adjustment layers, Alt, Option, Command, Y. Let's add a transform effect to it. Set the scale to 101. That's just gonna make sure we don't have any edges that bleed or are not covered. Alt click the position, again, pressurize time, put it at six, add a wiggle. Like the other one, we can just do two, 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 comma, three. And that's just gonna give us a little bit of camera shake, which is just gonna make it feel a little bit more vintage and grounded. I also want to add a little bit more flair to our text itself. I'm gonna start by opening up my text, go to animate and then add a position animator. Open it up, go to advanced. You wanna make sure that you have character selected and I'm just gonna do it by index. In the animator, you wanna select selector wiggly and that's just gonna make sure that it's a bit random as you can see, instead of just one by one. So set that to maybe three and this one to two. If you open the wiggly selector, you wanna turn off the wiggles per second and the correlation just put it all the way down to zero. And then if you scroll through the random seed, you can see that it animates a little bit. We're just gonna alt click the random seed and then just do a random, let's do 500. So right now it's gonna be a crazy wiggle. Go in, hit enter before the random, and again, add a pressurized time, which is gonna slow it down, set it to three, and that's just gonna give us a little bit more of a slower wiggle. And you can always adjust these values. Let's set that to one and two and that's just gonna give us less of that. We can take this animator, copy it, and paste it onto our other text, paste that there. So it's just adding more visual texture. Texture is not only a background texture, it's also how you choose to animate. Adding posterized time is texture, adding a camera shake is texture, adding little wiggles to the character is texture. What is also texture, in my opinion, is echo. If I add echo to my text, set echo operator to composite and back, set the number of echoes to Let's do 30 and set it to negative 0.001. That is just gonna give us a slight little drag, maybe even adjust this to three and set the number of echoes to 40. That's just gonna give us a slight bit of drag. Copy this, paste it to my decision as well. I'm also gonna add another one and name this a flicker. And I'm just gonna add a curves, just do a slight, just make it a little bit darker. Open the opacity, 
alt click it, do a pressurized time, six, let's do a wiggle. Let's start by doing a 10 comma 10, see what that looks like. Not much, let's just do 100 comma 50. And as you can see, that's just gonna give us a tiny bit of flicker. Last step uh, that I usually go through is adding grain because you know you love grain. Make a solid and set it to 50% gray. So just drag it all the way to the left, put 50 over here and the hex code is 80, 80, 80. FX console, add a grain, set the viewing mode to final output. I usually leave most of the settings as is. Sometimes I'll increase the intensity to 1.3 and maybe scale it down to 0.8, which is gonna be a little bit finer. Open up the animation. I usually set that to about 0.3. Add a hue saturation, decrease that to nothing. So just black and white. Pre-comp this and move all attributes into the new composition. Hit okay, and then you can either select overlay, soft light, or if you're feeling spicy, linear light. Linear light is very hard, soft light is barely there, and overlay is just a little bit more. So just go for the look you want. Linear light works really well if you want a super grungy look. And then I usually just decrease it to maybe about 60. Anyways, that's pretty much all that goes into creating some super cool title card animations. If you end up creating some of your own, please send them my way. I'd love to see them. Don't forget the basics. Colors make a huge difference. Text makes a good difference and texture is where we have the most fun. With that being said, I just want to say thank you for following along. Hopefully you feel like liking, commenting, subscribing, bada beam, bada boom. And uh, I'll see you again next week. So thank you and uh, peace out.